So start now, because it will take more than one try. Now is the time. This year is already flying by, and I don't want you to look up and say, man, I'll wait till 2022. No, do it now. You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow your side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews Okome. So let's get started. This year's already flying by. Hey guys, welcome, welcome back to the show. It's Nikayla here, and I am back with week four of the Side Hustle Pro Bootcamp series. So if you haven't listened to weeks one, two, and three, make sure you go back to those episodes. In week one, we covered how to jumpstart your side hustle and get in the zone. In week two, we covered mindset and how to push past those doubts. And in week three, we went over my three-step formula for making progress on your side hustle. And now, this week, the fourth and final week of Side Hustle Pro Bootcamp, we're going to act. We have had the past three weeks to get in the zone, kick our doubts to the curb, find virtual mentors, start doing the basics, and just limit the opinions of others as we move forward. Now it's time to act. I want to make sure you, myself, everybody is actually taking action. That is how we end off this boot camp challenge. So here is what acting entails. Let's get right into it. Step number one of acting is to announce. Announce your new side hustle if you haven't already. That's right. No more playing it close to the chest. No more viewing this as your top secret project that you can't tell anyone about. It's time to own it and claim it and verbalize it. Let the world know what you are preparing to do. Take them on the journey with you. So I want us to reimagine the way we think about launching and reimagine the way we think about announcing and what qualifies as an announcement. Okay. Whatever you refer to it as, whether it's going to market, debuting your side hustle, launching, let's reimagine this because the reason we keep a lot of this so close to the chest is because we feel we don't deserve to announce it until it meets some XYZ criteria, which is fictional, that we made up in our head, that we feel that those boxes need to be checked before we can announce. And I'm here to tell you, no, we are changing that. We are reimagining that criteria. I want you, and this includes me again, I'm talking to myself here (laughs) because I have work to do to finally act. Okay. So I want you to get comfortable with the pre-launch phase. What's pre-launch, Nikayla? All right, let's talk about pre-launch. I actually had a great conversation about this the other day and was reminded of how important it is to be comfortable with pre-launching. And that just takes so much pressure off yourself. So in the pre-launch phase, we acknowledge what we're doing. We announce it to others. Again, not by any means asking for approval. Like we talked about last week, we're not asking for approval. We're simply sharing what we're doing. And we invite others along for that ride. So This does two things, which are very important. Number one, it allows people to root for you, okay? It allows people to root for you. You'll be so surprised at how many people just get excited because they believe in you. And even if they don't, okay, those aren't your people. They're they're not rooting for you. But you'll be surprised at how many people just want to say, go girl, Go guy, go whoever it is. Like what you're doing is awesome. I'm so proud of you for putting yourself out there. Speaking of proud, the second thing that the pre-launch does is it gives other people permission to let their light shine as well. Sometimes seeing someone else's courage and confidence can give you the courage and confidence to do what you need to do. It's why we look to our virtual mentors and it's why we feel so empowered when we talk to mentors, whether virtual or uh, real life mentors. It's because their light shining gives you the permission to let your life shine as well.
Here's one way that I like to announce my side hustle. Number one, I make a post about it on my social media profiles. So my personal Facebook, my personal LinkedIn, all that stuff, I let people know what is going on. And number two, I create the social media profiles and share what I'm up to in that first post and in the post that I have on the page. So I've done this for Nikayla TV, my upcoming YouTube channel. I've created Nikayla TV on Facebook. I've created a page for it. I've created Nikayla TV on Instagram so that people can see the pre-launch phase of this. And so many people have said encouraging words. So many people have shared that they're rooting for me and The pre-launch phase is important because when you actually launch, these people are there for you on day one and they're there to say, oh my gosh, you did it. I'm so proud of you. I knew it was coming. It's finally here. So the pre-launch actually helps with the official launch once you feel like I'm ready. Here's my first video. Here's my first product or the website's now ready. Place your order. All of that good stuff. Okay. So what about you? Don't overthink this. This is not some big reveal. You don't need to get balloons and put them in your house or apartment and make some post with like yourself all made up in like some special outfit. No, none of that is required. No photo shoot or anything needed. If you want some examples, simply go over to my Nikayla TV Instagram profiles and you can see what I shared. Or better yet, now that you know what a pre-launch is, I bet you will notice it more throughout all of your interactions online. You'll notice when businesses pre-launch a new product. You'll notice when people pre-launch services, pre-launch content, all of that. Take a look at it and decide what you're going to do for yourself. But step number one is to announce. Announce your side hustle if you haven't already. That is your week four step one. Okay, act announce. Step number two is to create your first product. If you are a product-based business, you're going to create the actual product that people can get from you. By now, you should have sketched out a prototype. Now, get a basic version made. I don't care if you have some super complex product that you want to bring to market. Listen, you're going to have to make a basic version. Your basic version should be what you're focused on before you try to get to the super complex version. And the longer it takes you to make that basic version, the longer it will take you to actually make the final product, that complex version you're trying to get to. If you listen to, go back and listen, and I'll put a link in the show notes to the episode with the Hairbrella founder. So she made a hat that's called the Hairbrella that covers your hair, protects it from the rain. And she went through so many prototypes, but she had to make that first one before she could land on the current version. And as a matter of fact, the version she had when she was in the guest chair is different than the version that's out now. She even improved upon it even more after being on Side Hustle Pro. So that just goes to show you, you can be making sales while you are improving. And that is what you need to be doing. So step number two is to create your first product. If you are an online service-based business, that means you're going to put out your first package of whatever that service is that you're offering. Go ahead and put it up there. If you're scared about, oh, I don't know if I'm pricing it correctly. I don't know if I'm this. Do it anyway you can adjust your prices, okay? I have put out programs and I have put things for sale and later changed the price. Increase, decrease all of that as I learn more. And we'll get to that next part, learning in a second. So create your first product, put out your first service package. If you're a content creator like myself, that means you're gonna complete the first version of content. So YouTubers, We need to film our first video, finalize our first video. Podcaster, you need to record your first episode. Blogger, you need to write your first blog post and click publish. That's the key part about the creation, guys. We can't just do it and then keep it on our computer. You have to publish it. In all of this, please refer back to what we talked about in week three of the boot camp. Come out the gate, have the basics covered. Once you have a good handle on the basics, then you can think about upgrading. 
So here's what I did. I, when I launched my podcast, came out the gate using a different microphone, recording in my living room. I knew much less about audio and all of that stuff then. So I just recorded with what I had and with where I thought was best and put out my episode. Okay. And as time went on, I improved the audio and I improved my show. Similarly with YouTube. Now, (laughs) the funny thing is that I have filmed so many times and, you know, messed up, tweaked it, had my phone settings go a little wonky, figuring out because I'm starting on my phone, right? To keep things simple. So I had to do a couple of recordings and now I'm in the editing phase of um, getting ready to do my voiceover, getting ready to finalize music and all of that stuff. So I'm in the creation phase and I want you guys to make sure you're in that phase too. And then we're going to hit publish. And spoiler alert, it's going to take you longer than you think. It took me longer than I think to get my first video done. I mean, so many bloopers and also just so many learning curves that I didn't realize and recognize things like um, the lighting, things like how long it would take to transfer files from my phone to my computer, how long it would take to do everything. Everything takes double the time that I expected. So it's good that I'm learning that now and it's good that I started creating. So start now because it will take more than one try. Now is the time. This year is already flying by. We're about to be finished with Q1, quarter one, in no time. And I don't want you to look up in the summer and say, man, I'll wait till 2022. No, do it now. Hey guys, it's Nikayla here with a quick word from our sponsors. Now, the other day, I was talking to a Side Hustle Pro guest. We were wrapping up the episode and she mentioned again just how difficult and stressful HR was for her as she's ramping up her new business. So I was like, girl, have you heard about Gusto? Are you using that? And she said she hadn't heard about it. And I was like, you have got to look into Gusto and you guys too. Let me tell you, if you have turned your side hustle into an official business, then you are probably starting to see that small business owners We wear a lot of hats and not all of these hats are fun. Let me tell you, let me keep it real with you. Not all of these hats are fun. Things like filing taxes and running payroll, they can be really daunting. But that is where Gusto comes in. Gusto makes payroll, taxes, and HR actually easy for small businesses like ours. You have fast, simple payroll processing, benefits, and expert HR support all in one place. And Gusto automatically pays and files your federal, state, and local taxes so you don't have to worry about it. Plus, they make it easy to add on health benefits and even 401ks for your team. Those old school clunky payroll providers that you're probably used to, they were not built for the way modern businesses like ours are run but Gusto is. So let Gusto wear one of the many hats in your business. Side Hustle Pro listeners, you can get three months free when you run your first payroll. Just try a demo. Head over to gusto.com slash SHP. That's gusto.com slash SHP for your free demo. Enjoy. This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. The online learning community is offering Side Hustle Pro listeners a free trial of premium membership. Now, many of you already know that one of my biggest side hustle hacks is Skillshare. I've been using Skillshare for years now. You've heard me talk about it. That's because it's the truth. There are so many excellent classes on Skillshare on topics such as freelance and entrepreneurship, marketing, video, websites, basically everything you need for your side hustle and more. So my most recent class on Skillshare is this class called YouTube Success Script, Shoot and Edit with MKBHD. And I found it helpful because it guided me through every stage of creating engaging content and then went into techniques for how to grow my YouTube channel. And it was taught by a YouTuber with over 13 million downloads. So I think he knows what he's talking about. (laughs) So Skillshare is where I go when I want to explore new skills, when I want to brush up on my old skills, when I want to develop new techniques, I go to Skillshare. And Skillshare has classes for every skill level. So you can take short lessons, you can squeeze it into your day. It's very easy. Plus, they also have a hands-on project to make sure that you practice and reinforce what you learn. 
So you've heard me rave about it. Now it's time to explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash hustle. Side Hustle Pro listeners, you will get one month free trial of premium membership at Skillshare.com slash hustle. Again, one more time, that is one month of premium membership at Skillshare.com slash hustle. So let's go over the steps so far. Here's what acting entails. Again, step number one is to announce. Step number two is to create. Now, let's get into step number three. Step number three of acting is to track. Track how your product, your service, your creation does. What I mean by that is, first of all, step one of that is you're going to have to determine your key metrics. The key metrics that you track your performance against is going to be different for everyone. I might be tracking something like subscribers or followers. I might be tracking things like video views, whereas you might be tracking sales or you might be tracking visits to your page. You will be tracking growth in a different way. Do industry research. You know, industry research can seem kind of intimidating at first when people say that phrase, like, oh my gosh, I need to know all these like different terms and all that stuff. No, start thinking about it in a simple way. For example, when you look at a competitor in your space, what is it about them that makes you think that they're successful? What are they doing that you identify as success? Okay, now what are the metrics there? What are the actual data points there that you're using to identify that? So again, I'll use myself as an example. If I'm viewing success as, oh, that person has a lot of subscribers or that person has a lot of consistent views in the, you know, five to 10K range on every video they release. Okay, that's a metric. I'm identifying views, I'm identifying subscribers, I'm identifying comments. And why does that equate with success? Well, because on YouTube, YouTube rankings are determined by these kind of metrics. These kind of metrics influence their algorithm. So that's how I determine my key metrics. Whereas you, you might identify something different that is important to you and important for your business and important for tracking success. So determine what your key metrics are. That's gonna be based on prior knowledge, researching your industry to figure out what you should be tracking, look at those competitors, and then read. Look at things that you've read about your industry, look at things that you've watched about your industry, and then finalize what it is you're gonna be tracking. And then part two of tracking is tracking the response and the feedback. But be careful and make sure it's feedback from the right people. You don't want to be just listening to everyone and everything, okay? Um, Hone in on if you are targeting the right people. Ask yourself, who are you even trying to target and why? Who are your people? Who is the audience for your product or your service or your content? And once you know that, then you can hone in on their responses and their feedback. What are they saying? What's working? What's not? So that's essentially how you track. And the reason why we track is, as I've been saying, you're starting this out very basic. You're starting this out without a whole lot of bells and whistles. And the way it's going to get better and the way you're going to refine your product, service, content is with taking into account the feedback of your target audience, taking into account the performance of your product service content and determining what you need to do based on what's going on in the industry and also the feedback you're receiving based on all of that, what adjustments you need to be making. So I'm going to give an example of the podcast. So with podcasting, some of my key metrics are my downloads per episode, the growth of my reviews, and also the overall growth of downloads overall, because not everyone listens to the episodes in chronological order. So your your downloads are going to grow beyond the episodes that are released that particular month. So I'm going to look at those key metrics. Um, There was a time when I would track more closely what's going on in the top business charts, because, you know, that's the charts that I wanted to really come in and ranking and make sure that I was there. So I was looking at who was also in the charts. What are they doing? How do they title their episodes to make it clear to their audience? And I worked on things like making sure that I'm coming up for the right keywords, making sure that it's very clear what my show is about so that people who are interested in these topics, you know, have my show pop up when they search for it. In addition, 
I also have marketing key metrics. So I am making sure that my Instagram page is growing because I see a direct correlation between the growth of my audience on Instagram and the growth of my show downloads. And that is why I put such an emphasis on that particular channel in my marketing. Now, your audience might live somewhere else. They may live on LinkedIn. As you study and learn about who your target audience is, you will learn their online behavior and where you need to focus most of your energy. So those are some of the things you learn once you act, (laughs) you know, once you actually announce, create and start tracking. There's no right or wrong in this. Do not look at someone else and say, man, I should have done it that way. There are a lot of people who have different strategies when it comes to marketing their podcast. And I love what they're doing. It works for their audience but it might not work for me and that's okay. And so I just focus on what I'm doing in my lane and not focus on them. So that's another part of tracking as well. You have to make sure that you are tracking your lane. As much as you look at what's going on in your industry to have background knowledge and information, don't get distracted by thinking you need to do things the exact same way as someone else. Remember that two plus two equals four, so does one plus three. So determine what your lane is. And with that, guys, let's go over this one more time. I can't say it enough. Week number four, our focus is to act. We're going to announce, announce your new side hustle if you haven't already. We're going to create, create your first product, create your first service package, content creators, create your first piece of content and publish it. And then we're going to track, track how everything does, determine your key metrics, track against that determine who your target audience is and track their response and feedback. This is your mission for week four, you guys. My hope for you is that this series is something you can play over and over again when you reach a mental block. That was my goal in doing this series. In addition, it has been helpful in me because as I record these episodes, I'm actually in that particular process that week. So this week, my focus and What I'm doing is acting, getting to the point of being able to publish that first piece of content. So I hope you guys will use this in the way I have. And that's all I can do. Honestly, I I can give you the support. I can give you the reminders. I can walk you through my process and how I get it done. But the next steps are up to you. You have to actually be the one to act. You have to actually be the one to put yourself out there. And you're going to have to work through the mental gymnastics that comes with this process, but you can do it. Keep going. Recognize that sometimes you'll take two steps forward and then one step back, but keep going. Listen to week two anytime you need that reminder of how to push through those doubts. This process is 90% mental. I always knew this process was mental, but it was actually a little surprising to me how much (laughs) it is mental. So many people, when you reach out to me, the things that you're talking about are the doubts that are holding you back. And I'm like, I can I can give you my goal getter action plan. I can give you templates till I'm blue in the face. But that part about pushing through whatever is in your mind, that is personal work. And that's something I had to accept for myself. So this is why I share with you and hope that along your process, because everyone's walk is different, that along the way, the things we talked about in this episode will help you to get through that mental gymnastics. If you can accept that this is going to be 90% mental and prepare to face it, you are already in a great place. You are already good. People talk about if you have what it takes to be a side hustler or an entrepreneur or a business owner. And honestly, all it takes is the commitment to face whatever challenges come your way, to stand tall, to understand that it's part of the process and to keep going. That's it. You don't need some special education. You don't need some special personal trait. That is what you need. You just need to commit to pushing through. And if you haven't already, do join us over in the Side Hustle Pro Facebook community so we can continue to check in with each other, share our wins, and hold each other accountable. Find us at sidehustlepro.co slash Facebook. And don't forget to sign up at sidehustlepro.co slash bootcamp to receive the recap of tips and resources for this series. And please note that 
I will be providing the recap by the end of February 2021 for free. But after that, this will likely be turned into a paid mini training where I want to do some extra stuff um, because I'm a little extra sometimes. But (laughs) and no, in all seriousness, this is your chance to get it for free. So do that by the end of February. Otherwise, there will be a small fee. Um, So get it while it's hot. You heard it here first. So there you have it, guys. Thanks for joining this Side Hustle Pro Boot Camp journey. I hope this was helpful. It sure was for me. I really appreciate you guys. And I will talk to you next week. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. It helps other side hustlers just like you to find the show. And if you want to hear more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Side Hustle Pro. Plus, sign up for my six-foot Saturday newsletter at sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter. When you sign up, you will receive weekly nuggets from me, including what I'm up to, personal lessons, and my business tip of the week week. Again, that's sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter to sign up. Talk to you soon.